Welcome back everyone, my name is Joel Feld and today I want to cover the topic of iCloud shared libraries. Not to be confused with shared albums, these are actually sharing your entire library. Here we go. iCloud Photos over the years has been pretty great amongst any iPhone and iPad user and even Mac user, but there has been some limitations when it comes to sharing. A few years back, Apple introduced Apple Shared Albums, which allowed you to share photographs with family members and people that maybe didn't have an iPhone or an iPad or a Mac computer but you didn't have a lot of control over the shared albums. Now I do have a whole other video dedicated to shared albums that I will link down below, so check that out. But I'm gonna go through the differences between the two, how to set up iCloud shared libraries, how to leave a library, and kind of the steps that are involved and why this is a good step in the right direction. I think one of the biggest benefits to the shared libraries is the following scenario. So my wife and I, plus the four kids, collectively we all have iPhones and iPads and some of us computers and whatnot. And essentially what happens is if we go on vacation and I take a photograph, the ability to share that with them, I either text it to them or I email it. Oh, I don't email it. I text it to them or airdrop it. And essentially what happens then is it's taking up space almost double in our iCloud because it's going up to my iCloud photos, which is different from my wife's iCloud photos, which is different from my son and my daughter's uh, iCloud photos as well. So you're often duplicating storage in the cloud, which can be a little annoying and frustrating. So iCloud Shared Library allows you to have one library that's collectively shared amongst everyone that you want it to be with. Now we do family sharing, so all of us are tied to the same iCloud service, Apple One, but you can share a library with someone else that's not part of your family. So if you wanted to share it with a brother, sister, mom, dad, whomever it may be, you have the ability to do that. So the benefits of this are really actually extremely nice. So what I want to do is just walk through the steps of how to create a library and see it in live action of on a computer and an iPhone and start from scratch. Starting off, I have two different computers here and an iPhone. And because I have multiple Apple IDs, I actually already have a shared library set up, but I don't want to start with that one because I want to show you how to set one up from scratch without just starting and showing you the shared library to begin with. So this computer right now, what we're looking at, if I go to the Apple in the top left screen and choose system settings, this is the Apple ID, joel.feld at iCloud.com. So this is just one of my test accounts. It's got five gigabytes, the, the free version of iCloud, which is honestly useless, but this is something I just often use to do examples and things like that. So if I come to Apple Photos here, Apple Photos was already open. So let me just make this a little bit larger. So we're gonna go to Photos in the top left of the menu bar and choose Settings. And in the Settings, we have three categories across the top. We have General, we have iCloud, and we have Shared Library. And Shared Library is what we want to focus on. So it says, iCloud Shared Photo Library. Share photos and videos from moments spent together with family and close friends in one library. You can only have one shared library and whomever creates it will provide iCloud storage for all items. So that is a very important key. Essentially it's saying with this account, it's only five gigabytes of iCloud storage. So if I'm sharing this one, sharing my, this library with someone that like my personal one, which has two terabytes of storage, I'm not going to be able to combine those together because it's not a large enough bucket to fit both accounts. So just be cautious of that. Now you can do what I do, which I'll show you in later on, where I have two Apple IDs that I'm using that I actually pay for the two terabyte storage, which then collectively gives me four terabytes together to store all of my photos and videos. So nice little side trick there. But I digress. Here, 
what we want to do and you can click on learn more here and what it will do is take you out to apple's support site and give you all the information that you need to know but i will link these down in the description for reference but what we want to do now is choose get started and when we choose get started it'll say before you get started photos and videos in a shared library will not be available on the following devices until they're up to the latest software so I actually have a really old 2009 Mac Pro that is not on the latest software because it can't upgrade anymore. So that is a limitation. The requirements, let's pull up uh, iCloud back here. So to create a shared library, you need an iOS device running at least iOS 16 or above, as well as Mac OS Ventura 13 or above. So just know that for reference. I will say that all of my Macs are running macOS Sonoma 14 and all of my iPhones and iPads are running iOS 17, just for reference. All right, so let's minimize this. We'll go back to the message here. So there's nothing I can do about this. It's just letting me know, know that this Mac Pro is not going to be able to see the shared library and that's perfectly fine because that thing needs to retire anyways. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose continue anyways. And then it says, okay, well, who do you want to invite to the shared library? You can invite up to five other people. So again, only a total of six people can be sharing one particular library altogether. So I'm gonna click on add participants and I'm going to share this with my other test account, learn with Joel Feld at iCloud.com press return on the keyboard and I'm gonna click on add. So now it's, I could add other people here if I made a mistake, I can hover my cursor on top of here, click the little dots and say add to contacts, contacts because they're actually not in my contacts or I can choose remove, but we're gonna leave all of that there and we're gonna say continue. And so now it says, okay, when you move these photos to a shared library, what do you want to include? Do you want to include all my photos and videos? Do you want to choose by date? Do you want to choose manually? Or in the bottom left here, you have the ability to move photos later. Because essentially what you're doing is with this iCloud photo library right now, it's all syncing to one library right here. When you create a shared library, it's creating a whole other one that is now kind of the parent library, which will then talk to another one of whom it's shared with. So this one up here is going to be the, the main shared one, but then you can have a separate library, the existing one here, and then whoever you share it will have also their existing one over here. So really, when you create a shared library, you're dealing with two different libraries that you can independently toggle between plus share the shared one with someone else. So it's, it's really, really convenient. It sounds way more complicated than it is, but just bear with me. I'm, I'm a visual person, so let's, let's continue through. I can click on all photos and videos, and it does give you a message down at the bottom. Hidden and recently deleted items will not be included, so don't worry. All of the photos that you may have hidden for whatever reason, uh, don't worry about that. Those will not be shared. That's all I'm gonna say on that. Uh, we can choose by date or we can choose manually. If I chose by date and choose next, it's going to give me a dropdown of share past photos starting from a date. So if I wanna go back a year and then everything from that starting point forward would include the photos. I don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna click on back here. If I click on choose manually and do next, now it's gonna load a little window where I can literally manually choose multiple photos and then add that to the shared library, which could take a very long time depending on how many photos and videos you have. Click on back again, or I could say move photos later, and then it brings me to the next step to invite someone. But I'm gonna click on back here because I'm just gonna say, I wanna share all my photos and videos, and then I'm gonna choose next. At the top, it gives me a summary. It says 36 photos, three videos are going to be shared. I have photos dated back from September 19th, 2014 to today. And it's saying, hey, let's preview the shared library so that you can verify and make sure this is what you wanna do before you actually send the invitation to them. So I'm gonna preview the shared library. And essentially it's just 
showing me all the pictures that are currently in this iCloud library. Now this is a very small one because it's easier for us to walk through because if you have, let's say 30, 40, 50,000 photographs, it will take some time to move things and get things starting to synchronize again. So just be aware of that. So all of this looks good. Notice in the top left here, it says previewing shared library, review the continued setup. And then in the top right, I have the continue button. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on continue. And then it says, okay, let's invite that person to the shared library. So it says, learn with Joel Feld at iCloud.com will have access to the 36 photos and three videos you've added, as well as any new items going forward, which you can change later on. And then I can say invite via message. So I'm gonna click on invite via messages. And it popped up with iMessage on the computer here. I've never used iMessage, so that's why it's prompting me up with all of these pop-up messages. So shared with you, yes, we can turn that on. I'll click okay. And allow messages to share the notifications. Yeah, that's fine, click okay. As you can see, I've done a lot of testing with this, so I have another option down below that. But this new message is going to learn with Joel Feld. And notice up here at the top, I've already shared this because I've been te I test this a lot. So down here at the bottom, I'm gonna say join my photos and then press return. So now it's going to text message, send a text message to that account. So if I come to my computer over here, I'm gonna open up messages and notice I got the text message, uh, send read receipts, uh, sure, why not allow. Okay, so I got my message from joel.fell to iCloud.com. That's the account that's sharing the library. And here it says, share my photos, share my photos. I'm gonna click on view. And it's opening up Apple Photos on this computer. And then shared library invitation. Uh, Joel Feld, Joel.Feld has invited you to share this library, create a shared library and combine the photos and videos with the people closest to you. And it, it gives you a reminder, you can only have one shared library and this account, the Joel.Feld, is the one that's going to take the brunt of all of the storage that you have in the cloud for any photos that learn with Joel Feld at iCloud.com adds to it. So I can either click get started or decline. Before I click on get started, I'm actually going to decline this because I want to walk through the process of how to do the same exact thing on the iPhone that we just did on the computer and see how it is pretty much the same. So uh, yes, I'm gonna decline the invitation, choose decline, and then I'm gonna come back to this account over here and notice that it brings up a message saying your shared library is ready. Uh, you can change your library view, library suggestions. I'm gonna go ahead and click on done here. So now we need to go back to photos, choose settings, and under that shared library, notice it shows the participants of who we've invited in addition to some other settings here. So I wanna start from scratch. So we're gonna delete the shared library. So here it says, when you delete it, do I wanna keep everything or keep only what I've contributed? And there is a difference between the two if these have been shared for a while. So we're gonna come back to that in a moment, but right now we're just gonna say keep everything and I'm gonna choose delete shared library. Are you sure? Yes, I wanna delete the shared library. So now it says deleting shared library and it's in the process of doing that. And you'll notice if we go to the phone here and I go to settings and go to Apple ID, and choose photos. Down here, it shows the library that's shared, but we're gonna wait for this process to be deleted. All right, so we've deleted the shared library that we just quick created on the Mac here. Let's look at how it's set up on the phone. And again, the phone is going to be the same process as an iPad. So we're gonna go to settings. We're gonna touch my Apple ID at the very top. Notice it's the joel.fell at iCloud.com and we're gonna share that with the Apple ID of learn with Joel Feld at iCloud.com. Yes, I have way too many Apple IDs. So I digress. So now we're gonna choose iCloud in the center and we're gonna choose photos about halfway down. And if I scroll down just a little bit, you'll see shared library setup. So if I touch that, it says iCloud shared photo library, pretty much the same exact message that we saw on the computer here. I can say get started. It warns me about the Mac Pro because it's old school and it's not gonna work anymore. So if you don't have an older computer that's associated with your Apple ID, 
you probably aren't even gonna see this message. So I'm gonna choose continue anyway, add participants, learn with Joel Feld at iCloud.com. So it recognizes it, I'm gonna touch it, and now I'm gonna touch add in the top right. I'm gonna choose next, pretty much the same exact options. So I'm gonna say all my photos and videos, we'll do next. Yes, preview the shared library. Notice there was a skip option, but I guess you can just skip that. And I'm gonna to touch continue, and then it gives me to either invite via messages or share link. The other way gave me a link too, I think I just skipped over it. So I'm gonna invite messages, literally the same exact prompts and messages on the phone that you'll see on your Mac. Join photos again. All right, so I'll send that. now. On my phone, this is slightly different because now it gives me a choice to say share from camera. Add photos and videos directly to your shared library with the library button or choose to share automatically when participants are nearby with Bluetooth or share manually. So these are some really, really nice settings that you can do to automatically share photos and videos to the shared library. Now, I'm not gonna say share automatically. If I do click on share automatically, I can always change those back in the settings and we'll cover that in a moment here. So I'm gonna say share manually and then it says my uh, shared library is ready. So I'm gonna choose done. So now on my phone, notice it says moving 39 items to shared library. Well, I remember that's because I told it to move everything, all photos and videos from this joel.feld at iCloud.com. Now I need to go check out the invite on my other account here. Notice it says join photos again. I'm gonna click on view, opening the invitation. Yes, get started. And here I'm gonna say, sure, why not? Add all my photos and videos to it as well and say next, preview the shared library. Now on this Apple ID, I have a lot more photographs. If I scroll down to the bottom here, there's 521 photos and three videos associated with this learn with Joel Feld at iCloud.com Apple ID. So notice in the top left, I can preview it and then I can choose continue in the top right. So I'm gonna say continue and it says, all right, ready to join the library. Yes, yes I am. So I'm going to join the shared library. So now it says that it's ready. Yay, I can click on done. So now back on this computer, notice in the shared library settings, it says, it no longer says invited, it now shows me that the owner of this shared library is joel.feld at icloud.com and I've shared that with learn with joelfeld at icloud.com. And also if I go to my phone here, if I go back to the settings, I'm still in the iCloud settings, so I'll take a step back. We're in the main settings, Apple ID, iCloud, and Photos. If I scroll down, notice the shared library. So the owner is joel.feld again, and it still shows invited. It's just, it will switch over to not say invited just like this one. So just within a matter of time. Now let's jump back to the computer here because if you notice, you can start to see photographs pile in from this other account into this particular library. You'll also notice some new buttons that were not in Apple Photos that are now there. The biggest difference is you have this toggle switch up in the top left. And when I click on this, I can toggle between the view of both libraries, my personal library or my shared library. If I click on personal library, Naturally, there shouldn't be any videos except for the screen recording of this phone here. If I click on shared library, that's going to show everything combined with these two accounts into one location. And if I click on both libraries, it's gonna combine everything in the shared and anything that's on this phone or the screen recording that I just saw there. Same thing with this computer over here. If I click on shared library, it's gonna share us, it's gonna show us everything. If I click on personal library, there's literally nothing in there because I moved everything to the shared library. So if I click on both libraries, now I see everything combined. Now let's jump back and look at the settings here in Apple Photos. Underneath the participants, I can choose to add more participants and walk through those same exact steps. Underneath that, I have options for shared library suggestions as your library grows and you have more and more people recognized in your photographs, it's just going to say, hey, 
Uh, do you want to share these pictures with this particular person? And then down here, you have a toggle to see notifications if something gets deleted, which I highly recommend keeping that checked. That way, if this library is shared with your kids or something like that, and they start just deleting stuff, you'll know that your photos are being deleted. And then down at the bottom, we have the option for delete shared library. Now there's some other settings that I wanna cover specifically to the phone and the camera. Let's jump to the phone here. I'm gonna go open up the camera. And so when I touch the camera now, I have some new buttons that I may not have noticed before. Notice in the very top left here, there's next to the flash, there's a little circle with a silhouette of people with a line through it. If I touch that, it now turns yellow and it says shared library. So what this means is if I take a photograph with the line through it, so right now if I take a photograph, photograph of my zoom recorder, that photograph just is going, go to Apple Photos, I'm tell it to sync now so it can resume. So that photograph is going to my personal library. This account over here, the Learn with Joel Feld at iCloud.com, is not going to see this photograph because it's in my personal one. So if I jump to the computer here and choose personal, here it is. This photograph is now in this personal library. It's not in the shared library. If I go back to the camera on my phone, choose camera, if we toggle this on, now any photograph that I take, so let's take a picture of this perception microphone. We'll exit out of the camera, we'll go back to photos. So now that picture is going to upload to iCloud, but instead of going to my personal library, it's now going to the shared library. Now this other account will see it. So if we come to the computer here, I can click on shared and scroll down to the bottom. And in a moment here, that photograph should go there, but you'll notice down here, syncing items to iCloud to items. So it's gonna take a moment for that photograph to get to the shared library. Now you'll notice on the phone here, do you see in the top right of some of the photographs, it's got the silhouette of the two little people. That is a little indicator to let me know that that photo or video is located in the shared library. And if I touch the little dots in the top right, it is this shared library indicator that allows me to see that. So if I touch that, notice they go away. I would highly, highly recommend that you leave that on because it's just a very good reference so that you know which library your photographs are in. You'll also notice that in the top right, I have the same ability to switch amongst both libraries, personal library and shared library. So if I touch personal library, I'm gonna see these items. If I go back to the top right, choose shared library, now I see the, the shared one. I'm gonna go back and choose both libraries. You can get that same notification on the computer as well. If I'm in Apple Photos and I go to view on the top menu bar, go down to metadata and make sure that in shared library is checked. If I uncheck that, notice in the top right of the photograph, that little indicator disappeared. If I go back to view and choose metadata and toggle this on, I can now see that the little indicator is back to represent if the photograph is either in the shared library or not. Now this last microphone, it now is showing up on both computers under the shared library. So under shared library, I have the photograph here and shared library, well, I'm selected on both libraries. If I click on shared library, it shows up here as well. I don't have the indicator on here, so let's go up to view, go to metadata and, oh, because I'm only selected on shared library, duh. If you're only selected on there, it is shared. So if I go back to both libraries, I will see that little indicator in the top now, if I click on personal library, notice I'm not gonna see the microphone in this library because it's only in the shared library. The learn with Joel Feld at iCloud.com account has its own personal library. So you can still keep your own photos and videos independent from that shared library. Now I digress, let's jump back to the camera here. So you have that little note indicator at the top and if I touch the top center here, notice it's also located in the bottom as well. So two little places to get to that little setting. And this is all manual. You have to change it when you go into your camera. Now there is an option if I go to the settings and let's go back to the main screen. Let's scroll down to camera. 
And when I go to camera, there's this category that says shared library. So now I have the ability to just automatically share. Remember, this was one of those prompts that appeared on the, the phone when we were creating that library. So if I touch share automatically, notice it says you can choose to have your camera automatically add photos and videos to the shared library when it detects you are with participants. Bluetooth must be turned on to share automatically. So this is kind of more of a, an option where when you're nearby. So if, if this was my actual account and this uh, Learn with Joel Feld was my wife's account, if we are on vacation and we're in close proximity to, to one another, that photograph is automatically gonna be shared to that individual that you're sharing the library with. So it's kind of neat. There's also this option where it says share when at home. So again, it uses the proximity. Now you have to have your own address associated to your contacts in your device. But if I toggle this on, it's essentially saying, always add photos and videos from your camera to the shared library when you arrive back at home. So that's totally up to you. I personally like to do share manually. That way I'm 100% uh, aware of what I'm actually sharing to that library. So that's something I don't intentionally want to get shared, doesn't get shared. And if you don't want it to show up in the camera app at all, you can just toggle this setting off. So if I exit out of here and go back to the camera, notice that little indicator on the top. I don't even have it anymore to switch between the two uh, shared library and personal library. And if I touch the top center, I don't have it in the bottom right either. I still do though have it in the photos in the top right, click the little dots. I can still switch between the libraries. Now there's a few other options that you have because let's say that, oops, I accidentally shared a photograph to the shared library. I really don't want it there and I want to bring it back to the personal library. So let's go to personal library on the Mac here. And I'm gonna go on my phone here and choose personal library. So notice we see the same exact thing here. These four items, these three videos and this uh, picture of the Zoom recorder are not on this shared library. We don't see it. We see the other microphone and everything else, but these four items are only on the personal. So if I wanna move this photograph to the shared one, I can right click on it and say, move one photo to shared library it's gonna say, hey, move to shared library. Okay, moving this photo to the shared library will allow all library participants to view, edit, and delete this content at any time. So I'm gonna say move. And that brings up a good point. Anyone that is a part of this shared library that's invited, you all have equal permission. Anyone can edit a photograph and it's gonna edit that photograph on all of your devices. Anyone can delete a photograph and it's gonna delete on everyone's devices. Anyone can add a photograph and it will be added to all of your devices. So just keep that in mind. So you notice it disappeared from the phone here. Well, not disappeared, uh, it just disappeared out of view. So I'm gonna to touch the top right on the phone, go to shared library and notice there it is. I'll go to the phone here, do shared library and there it is. Now, if I come back to that same photograph on this account, if I right click on this, notice I can't move that photograph because this account didn't add that photograph. Therefore, I can't essentially take a shared photograph that I didn't add there. I can't put it in my personal one. So there are some little permission things where if you add that photograph to the shared library, someone else can't take it out of the shared library and put it in their personal one. Only the person that adds it there can go back and forth. So for example, if I right click on one of these photographs, because these family photographs were added from this Learn with Joel Feld account, I can say, yes, move this one to my personal. And now I won't have access to that photograph with this account, if that makes sense. So now if I go back to, if I toggle on personal library here, I'm gonna see one photograph and it's going to be disappearing from the shared library where I will no longer see it on this account. You can do the same thing on the phone here. If I touch and hold on a photograph, notice I have the option to say move to personal library. So I can again move that photograph back to my personal library. But notice if I take one of the family photographs, by the way, this is an updated photograph of the family here, my parents. 
uh, I made them do family photographs because it's been a while. And so, you know, kind of getting everyone out in the field because that's what we do. But I digress. So if I touch and hold on this photograph, notice I don't have the choice to move it to my personal one because this photograph was added to the shared library from Learn with Joel Feld at iCloud.com, not Joel.feld at iCloud.com. So just keep that in mind. Now, one last thing here. Let's say I take a photograph and I click delete. Notice it's, go it's going to say this photo will be deleted for all shared library participants and from iCloud Photos on all of your devices, delete from all participants. So I'm gonna to touch that and it's gone now from everyone. Now naturally the settings, let's go to the photos and choose settings. I do have delete notifications turned on. So in a moment that would pop up here, but let's go back to the shared library and I'm just gonna select these photographs, press delete on this computer delete for all participants. It kind of gives you the same message. I'm gonna choose delete. Yes, click okay. And I should see those be removed. Yep, they disappeared. They should disappear from the computer here as well. Now I haven't got a notification, but usually it takes a moment for it to, to send. So eventually I will get a notification. If I scroll down here, notice I did get a notification saying Joel joined your shared library, which is fine. But there will be another notification that says so-and-so has deleted these items, do you wanna check it? Now, when an item is deleted, you can go to the recently deleted and look for that photograph. So on the Mac here, if I click on recently deleted, I'll view album and it wants my password. So here are those two photographs. If I go to this computer here, here and click on recently deleted, I'll see the same three photographs. And on the phone here, if I go to photos, Go to albums, swipe back to the main album screen, go all the way to the bottom and choose recently deleted. You'll notice you'll see those three photographs there also. Now there is some verbiage down at the bottom. Notice it says three photos. Photos and videos show the days remaining before deletion. Items that were part of your personal library when you created the shared library will be stored in iCloud for up to six months. So it is kind of nice. They do store photographs in iCloud longer if things get deleted, but never count on that because that could always not happen. It's always a good idea to have a backup of your photos and not 100% rely on any cloud storage. That's my personal preference, but you can recover these photographs. So if I touch select in the top right, I could touch the family one. And then in the bottom right, there's a little circle and I can choose recover. Yes, recover that photograph. So now on both of these different accounts, it's going to take that photograph out of the recently deleted and put it back into the shared library. On the computer here, I can do the same thing. I can select it and choose recover in the top right. And again, it will bring that photograph back into that shared library where it was deleted from. If I select this on the learn with Joel Feld at iCloud.com account and choose delete one photo, it's gonna say, hey, sorry, you can only permanently delete a photo you added to the shared library. So recently deleted photos will be permanently deleted after 30 days. So notice I have to come back to this other account, select it, delete one photo, and it's gonna say it's gonna delete from all devices. So this whole process, we use two different accounts, learn how to set it up. Now let's briefly talk about deleting and or leaving a library. And I'm doing it with all of these test accounts because the amount of photographs I have in my personal library is a lot. I have like 60,000 photographs and going back and forth, either, even though I can share it and re-add it, it takes days for it to resynchronize and get back on the same page of all of my devices. So it may seem a little confusing of going through all of these accounts, but there's a method to my madness. Now let's say that the Learn With Joel account here says, I don't wanna be a part of your library anymore. You invited me. I don't like all of your cat pictures or something. I don't know, but I wanna leave that shared library and just be back on my own. So on this computer here, in Apple Photos, if I go to Photos at the top, choose Settings, and go to Shared Library, notice down at the bottom, it has the opportunity to say Leave Shared Library. 
Now, if I go back on the computer here, the one that initially shared the library, let's go to photos, choose settings, and under shared library, notice it says delete shared library. And if I go on the phone here, this is the same account as this main computer. Go to my Apple ID, choose photos, go to photos here, shared library, and notice it says delete shared library. So I have the ability on this account to leave the shared uh, willingly. On here, I can delete the entire account, or if I click on the name here, I can say, well, I just wanna kick them off of my shared library. I no longer want them on there. So I can click on the little dots here on the computer and say remove, or on my phone here, I can say, uh, I can touch this and say remove from shared library, and that will also kick them off of my shared library too. So for this, I'm just gonna say leave shared library. Now, this gives me the opportunity to say, okay, I'm leaving the shared library. Do I wanna keep everything or keep only what I contributed? So I'm gonna actually say keep only what I contributed and say leave shared library. And it says 520 photos, three videos will be added to your personal library. So I'm going to leave. So that takes a moment for that to sync up. Now I wanna bring up Apple's support article really quick because there is something very important about leaving a shared library. And I will link this down below. I'm gonna click on the link for learn how to leave, how to properly leave photos that you don't wanna look at anymore, apparently. I'm gonna scroll all the way down towards the bottom because this is actually a very important note. If a participant has been in the shared library for more than seven days, all of the shared assets are automatically copied to their personal library. If they've been in the shared library for less than seven days, only photos and videos that they contributed are copied to their photo library. So I see that as if you're sharing your photo library with your girlfriend, boyfriend in high school, and you two don't work out, if it's been more than a week, when you kick that other person off your library, I, if you kick that person off your library or if they voluntarily decide to leave or if the library gets deleted, they're gonna have all of the photos that you've combined over that time period. So just be aware of that. Um, you're pretty much giving them everything if it's past that seven days. Now also keep in mind that you need enough iCloud storage to house all of that. So for example, if this account that I just left had 50 gigabytes worth of photos and videos, but this joel.feld account only has five gigabytes, it's not going to synchronize that stuff up to the cloud and it's not, I'm not going to get that, those photos and videos. Notice on my phone here, the learn with Joel Feld at iCloud is already gone. If I go back to the computer here, let's go to photos, settings. Notice it's gone from there also. And on this, it still says leaving shared library. So that's perfectly fine. Notice down here at the bottom, it's syncing the library. So it's just doing its process behind the scenes. And again, it, it does take a while, depending on the amount of photographs that you may have. So that's why I like to troubleshoot with different accounts. So we're just gonna leave that there. Uh, now, what was I talking about before? Girlfriends, boyfriends, breaking up, leaving the library. Oh, iCloud storage. Okay, so if someone leaves and they have a whole bunch more storage than you have, notice on the, if I go to the phone here, if I go back to settings, let's go back a few menus. Notice at the top here, your storage is almost full. So I'm already approaching that five gigabytes. So if, if I kept everything from this other account, I'm not gonna be able to have any of those photos and videos because I don't have enough iCloud storage. So just be aware of that. That could potentially happen, which could result in you losing photos and videos, which is why I always say, keep a hard copy of all of your photographs locally on an external hard drive tied to Apple Photos and, and it will just don't 100% rely on the cloud. Now, if we go back to the computer here, it has successfully left the shared library and now it says get started where now this account I could choose to add new participants and move forward with starting from scratch. Now if we go back to this account here I'm going to delete the shared account 
And notice it says, do I wanna keep everything or keep only what I've contributed? And I'm going to say, keep only what I've contributed and say, delete shared account or delete shared library and delete it. And that will eventually synchronize and I'll be back down to the 37 photographs or whatever it may be on there. All right, so now this process was all about showing you two different demo accounts and the process of setting it up. I wanna go and show you now my actual personal library and my other library that I use so you can have a real life example with albums and keywords and all of that which are important and I wanna show you kind of my setup and my workflow of how I juggle two iCloud libraries and get that potential to use four terabytes of storage versus two terabytes. So let's set the stage. So if I go to Apple Photos on here, let's go to Photos, choose Settings, and go to Shared Library. You'll notice that Participants, joelfeld.me.com, uh, joel and Learn with Joel at iCloud.com. Let's go to this computer here, go to Settings for um, Photos, go to Shared Account or Shared Library, and notice the owner is Learn with Joel at iCloud.com and I've invited my personal account to that one. Now this gives me the ability to actually have, I pay for two, ter two, two terabyte accounts. My way of thinking is all of my, I'll quote unquote, say professional photographs, I've all moved that to the shared library and that way I kind of separate any photos and videos that were taken with my iPhone is in my personal and anything that's not taken with that, I put actually in the shared library. So let's close out of these settings and take a look at a few more things. One of the biggest things that I don't like about shared libraries is the fact that the albums do not sync. Yeah, the albums do not sync. If you have a whole bunch of organization with albums and you share that with someone else, they're not gonna see the same organization in albums. So that's where I've started to use keywords because when I assign keywords, that does synchronize to both accounts. As you'll notice over here on my Learn with Joel account, this is one that I've actually started to organize all of our different travels. You know, I, I'm breaking it down by state so I can see everything that we've gone to. And I've redone my organization of photos multiple times and I don't think there's any right right or wrong way to do it. I think for the long time I did it by date. You can see my personal honestly is, is a mess. So that's why I'm focusing on my shared one and cleaning all of that up and tagging everything with keywords because keywords synchronize amongst all of your devices. Even iPhone and iPads, you can search for a keyword. You can't add a keyword to a photograph on your iPhone or iPad, but you can search a keyword and it will show up everywhere, which is really, really nice. So if I go to my main library that I use primarily, if I go to personal library, here is where we're gonna see all of the photographs taken um, primarily with an iPhone or the video that I've taken on my iPhone as well. There are some exported photographs that I have here that I just haven't moved to the shared album, but me personally, I'm just keeping that as any photograph with my phone. If I go to shared library, this is where I'm gonna keep all of my professional photographs and everything tagged with keywords and organized here. But you'll notice the albums don't reflect what the other Apple ID shows. So there are some nuances to that. Now, if I look over here, the reason that I start to use keywords is if I wanna find, so here's a photograph of the kids playing in the pool with the giant duck. Now these, I broke my rule. These are actually in the shared library, taken with the phone. I'll have to move them back, but this will prove, uh, this will demonstrate my, my keyword concept. If I click on the little info on the top, I'm going to select both of these photographs and I'm gonna add duck, or I'm gonna say pool duck as a keyword. Now, if I were on this computer and I wanted to find that photograph, it's not gonna be organized in any album or anything because the albums do not sync amongst libraries. So I'll have to wait for this to synchronize to this to iCloud and go uh, to all of my devices. 
So let's one by one uh, check to see if it's syncing. So if I go on my phone here, touch search in the bottom right, type in pool duck, you'll notice it has a category down at the bottom that says keywords and now I see that. If I go on the Mac here and type in pool duck, notice keywords right here and it shows both of those two photographs. So that's kind of the method that I've used to utilize keywords more. And if I go back to Apple Photos, I can choose Window and go to Keyword Manager and I can start to see all of the keywords that I have in here. So here's another example, I have Ferrari. So my brother loves Ferraris. And so in the shared library on my Learn With Joel account, I have a lot of pictures of Ferraris. So I've tagged them with keywords, Ferrari. And if I type in Ferrari, and if I scroll down, notice keywords, there's 94 photographs. And notice down here, I'm glad this popped up, indexing your library. So a lot of times your, your Apple photo library is always gonna be indexing when there's changes. So if things aren't showing up right off the bat, just know that it takes time for all of these keywords and edits and everything to synchronize through iCloud and all of your devices. So I can touch the keywords there and I'll see all of the photographs. If I type in Ferrari, notice it breaks it down to photos that are named with Ferrari, text found in photos, keywords, and file names. So here are those keywords as well. And that's kind of how I do my organization or starting to with two different libraries. Now there's one thing I wanna last end with and that's the option for duplicates. If I click on duplicates over here on the left hand side, you'll notice that it says duplicates are not available when viewing the shared library or personal library. You must change it to view both libraries to show duplicates. So I actually need to go to both libraries here and notice I would get the same message over here on this computer. So I need to switch that to both libraries and then I can go through and analyze any duplicate photos, which for these accounts, I have a ton of duplicates that I have yet to go through. I really wanna understand duplicates as this is a semi new feature of Apple Photos and there's a lot of testing that I wanna do in regards to Apple's built-in feature of duplicates. In the previous, I've made some other videos about finding duplicates and using third-party software. So I'll link those other videos down below as well. And in the past, I have not really been a fan of Apple's ability to find duplicates, but this does look promising, but I have really not dived deep into understanding this. So I, I'm not gonna say a whole lot on it because I, there's a lot of testing I wanna do, but just know that once you start doing a shared library, you need to be selected on both libraries in order to eliminate duplicates. So, if you've made it this far, thank you. And uh, I know this was a long topic, but photos to me are important and I wanna make sure that it's clearly, I do the best to understand how this works and share my knowledge with, with you. So. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead, hit that like button down below. If you wanna support me and my channel, hit that thanks button. And if you enjoyed what you saw and you wanna learn more, hit that subscribe button, tap that little bell, and we'll see you next time.